starting the microbiology lab tour before you come into lab make sure you tie back um, long hair it's very important that there is no food nor drink of any kind in the microbiology lab when entering the microbiology lab the first thing we want to do is spray our benches with disinfectant before placing any books or personal items on the bench top. The presumption is every surface in a microbiology lab is potentially contaminated. Only after spraying down my bench should I place any items on the bench surface with your name either written on the lab coat itself or if you have a name tag that you can wear during lab. Indirect vented safety goggles. We'll be using these when we're working with hazardous stains or metabolic reagents. In addition, during lab, everyone must be wearing closed-toed, closed-heeled shoes to protect our feet from damage from broken glass. When buying gloves, please make sure to buy gloves that are not made of latex, as several people have latex allergies. When performing hazardous experiments, or if you have a cut or any kind of break in the skin, we should always wear our non-latex gloves. Whenever we work with hazardous chemicals, we always want to make sure that our safety goggles are on covering our eyes. Students need to buy microscope glass slides. Bulk glass slides can be bought through local biological supply companies. This is a pack of 72 glass slides which can be purchased for between five and seven dollars. Students also will purchase glass cover slips Again, these can be bought in bulk through biological supply companies. Students may also buy microscope slide and cover slip kits through the Sac City Bookstore. The kits come with 12 glass microscope slides and 12 cover slips. Um, students will be sharing a microbiology locker. Between two and four people will be sharing the locker. To bring one's lab coat and lab shoes in plastic bags, as often they will be stored in a separate location other than in the locker. Each student will be assigned a microscope. It's important that the students take very good care of the microscopes. Filtering our microbes, we often place them in an incubator, a warm environment that encourages their rapid growth and division. Because we have so many microbiology students, we don't incubate tubes in our test tube racks. Instead, we transfer them to labeled cans. And again, we always want to make sure that the screw caps are slightly loosened. Our auger plates, again, we want to make sure that they're inverted. Here we have one of two 37 degrees Celsius incubators. Each lab section will have a shelf upon which they'll place their tubes and auger plates. In addition, we have a 30 degree Celsius incubator, which causes great confusion as it looks like a refrigerator. This is the 30 degree Celsius incubator. Again, each lab section will have a labeled shelf. Again, this is an incubator, 30 degrees Celsius. This is a refrigerator. The job of the refrigerator is to keep our cultures and media cold to prevent microbial. Our eye wash station, in case students have chemicals splashed to the eye or microbial cultures, the caps are removed, the handle is pressed downward, and the water starts. It'll be important that we help our, um, our colleagues keep their eyes open, we'll flush with water, and then call emergency personnel. Full body chemical exposure, we have a shower, it's in the back of the lab, into the autoclave room, 
and we see the shower in back of the autoclave. There's a triangular handle that we pull down on to start the shower, and again, we would call emergency personnel. The kill area, this area is for any item that is contaminated and needs to be autoclaved before it's disposed. If I have microbial cultures um, that I no longer need, it's important that I first remove all the tape from any of the culture tubes. Removing all the tape includes tape um, that's been placed on the tubes by the, the stock room. Make sure to check that screw caps are slightly loosened to permit the venting of gases before placing the tubes into the correct kill area bin. Kill area, one bin is labeled for use slants and deeps. The second bin is labeled for used broths. Auger plates or streak plates that we no longer need must be taped together so the lid will not fall off the bottom. Labels need not be removed as these plates will not be reused. Used auger plates must go into the autoclave bag or biohazard bags which are located in bins at the end of each bench. We open the bin and we simply place the tape dish into the bin. End of each bench is a slide warmer. Make sure the slide warmer is plugged in before turning the slide warmer on. Slides which have microbial cells on the surface are placed on the slide warmers to um, increase evaporation of liquid. At the benches are sinks. Please do not use the sinks as trash cans. Pick it up. The area is the broken glass or sharps container. Used pasture pipettes may only be disposed of in the broken glass container. Glass slides are disposed of in the glass container. Any glass item should go into the broken glass container and not into the regular trash bag. The safety hood or fume hood is the location of our chemical waste containers. For example, gram waste, phenol red, methyl red, brome thymol, blue waste always goes into the appropriate container in the safety hood. In addition, when hazardous metabolic tests are being performed, they will be performed in the safety hood. The lab team will be assigned a specific gram staining station. When performing gram stains or any staining procedure, it's essential that students have their lab coat, their lab shoes, and their safety goggles on. Big hazard in the microbiology lab. Resources to extinguish a fire include a fire extinguisher, two fire blankets located on the first bench, and also on the 30 degree Celsius incubator. In the back of the lab, by the sinks, fire buckets with water are also located. In case one of our colleagues um, catches on fire, we're going to do stop, drop, and roll, and then quickly get them into the full body shower. Most common lab accidents are, are microbial spills. This is when we're working with microbes growing in liquid media, and the container in which the microbes are growing is dropped. The first thing we want to do is announce in a loud voice, we have a spill of E. coli, for example. The instructor will ask, is everybody okay? If everyone is safe, there's been no major contamination, no injury to any of the students involved, we ask the student that's involved in the spill to stay in place so they don't spread the microbes throughout the lab. Our colleagues, including the instructor, then will come to the aid of the student. After announcing the spill, we need to spray the entire spill area with disinfectant. The instructor will then glove up, bring over a secondary container to, after spraying the container, the instructor will remove the spill container to the kill area. The entire spill area will be sprayed with disinfectant. This often involves the floor as well. 
After spraying with disinfectant, the spill area should be covered in paper towels. Following a minimum of 15 minutes contact between the disinfectant and the spill area, the paper towels will be collected. We presume the paper towels potentially could be contaminated. Consequently, we do not throw them in the regular trash. We always throw them into the biohazard or autoclave bin. For handling any item involved in a spill, after collecting paper towels and disposing of them properly, contaminated gloves must also go into the autoclave or biohazard bin. The last step is always to wash one's hands. When in doubt, wash your hands.